So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to calculate all of our descriptive statistics and again, going through our whole data visualization process in R. So again, we'd have our basic R console that we open up when we have R Studio. First thing we're going to want to have is we're going to have a new R script. So you can hit Control Shift New or File, New File, R script. And again, keep in mind this was your kind of notebook. This is where everything that you put in and you'd run it from here so that you could save this and rerun your code if need be. If you know where you're going to set your working directory, your first line of code is going to be set, well, not set seed, sorry, set working directory, right? That pops up as I was typing. I can hit tab to get that to pop up and I can start putting in my directory. If you were like, oh, where exactly was my directory again? Where was I going for that? Well, what we can do is we can always go over here to files and hit these three little buttons over here, three little dots, go to directory, and you can go and you can search for where you have your file saved and where your main working directory is. So for me, that's going to be over here, our workbooks, descriptive statistics, and this is the file that I'm going to be, or the file history, sorry, the file history, the file folder I'm going to be working out of. And we see in here there is a data set. If I wanted to then, there is my big, long working directory. That's going to be a pain. I can just cheat a little bit. I can go more, set as working directory. And if I ever want to come back to this to say add more to it or to rerun it, I can just copy this up into my main bit there. And right again, the way we can run this is control enter. And we see that it runs again as our as our working directory so that everything we save, right? If we export anything from R, it'll save to this file folder. And if we try to read or import anything, it'll read it from this file folder. Okay, from here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to utilize that ggplot again. So if you have not already installed it, we will install packages and that was ggplot2. And right, this was, we're going to put a little note here to remind ourselves, this is to install the ggplot package. So if you need to install that, control enter, and it will begin to run that and install it. Once it goes through that whole process there and finishes, you'll want to then activate it. So go library and ggplot2. That there again, that is to activate the installed package. And there we go. Boom, it says always oh, built underneath an older R version. That's fine. It'll still work. Okay, so we have our required packages installed. We have our working directory set up. Next, we're going to want to read in our data. So in this case here, let's just call it x. Just it's some x variable that I'm dealing with. And the x is going to be read CSV. And that is going to be quotations uh, it's, everything's case sensitive, so quantitative.csv. And again, if I was like, oh, what was the name of that folder again? It pops up right down here. I can take a look at that. And right, what I'm doing is I'm reading in this and I'm saving this as this X. Say I didn't have that part there. Say I were to get rid of that. If I were to read this in, watch the console. Control enter. It just reads this all in, just boom. All 30 observations as so, right? I don't want that. I want this saved as an object. So we're going to go save that as X. And you notice it now pops up over here. X, 30 observations of one variable. If I click my little spreadsheet over here, it will pop up there. And again, we can visualize, we can see how that's going. One thing that we'll want to utilize, right? We can either go head of X, and will show us the head, and of course our title. And you'll notice that our heading, and this is kind of what we want to refer to a bunch, that's a really awkward kind of name to have to type every time we want to call this. So we can actually change the way that these uh, headings or these names have been, you know, have been written in, and we can use that using the names function. So we can go names of x, and if I hit that, it says, okay, here's the name. You only have the one vector, the one data set in there, one variable, and that's sample height dot dot cm dot. Okay, that's, that's, I don't like that. 
What I can do is I can overwrite that by just going names x and pointing to that and saying, okay, I want my name of x to be, and I'm going to have that as height. If I go control enter now, and then now, well, let's just go back. I'm just going to go back up to eight here and just run head of x again. We see that my row, or sorry, my row, my column title is now just height. So I've correctly changed that, and now that's going to make it easier to call. Okay, we kind of have some initial setup in place. Now what we want to take a look at is our basic descriptive statistics. We're going to want to calculate, and let's just put some headings for this. I want to calculate my minimum value, my maximum value. I want to figure out my quartiles. Right, so that's going to be Q1, Q2, and Q3. I want to work out my mean my variance, and my standard deviation. I then want to work out my skewness, and then I'm going to want to ultimately do a, uh, let's go visualization, a histogram, and so that's going to include our rule of 2 to the k, my bin width, and then my histogram itself. So a few steps involved in that and we can go through these one by one. So again, keep in mind, any time I put this hashtag in front of something, it's just gonna blank it out. It's not gonna run it as code. It's just strictly saying, oh, this is a note, just so that we know what's going on. So to start off, let's find our minimum value. So to find our minimum value, we can just start typing, All right? Hit tab to open this up, and there's our second one there, min. Hit tab again to open that up, and I want min of x, 120. Okay, there we go. If I wanted to save that so that I could refer to it later, maybe I save it as minimum, point an arrow to it, run that again, and you'll notice now I have data of x, and I have a value, I have minimum, showing up as 120. I can do the same thing for my maximum. I could save that as the maximum of x, and we see that popping up here, value of 240, right? It doesn't show up here in the console. It'll only show up in the console if I run just this max, right? Then it does. What about my quartiles? Well, here, okay, you're going to want to go quart and whoa, quarters. What's, what's going on? This isn't what we were thinking about. Okay, it's because in this case here, R is not thinking about it as quartiles. It's thinking about it as what it would call quantiles. So you'd want a quantile. And in this case here, you're going to put in your value, comma. You're then going to put in what quantile or quartile, percentile, even that you're interested in, right? This is really it. It's, just, it's strictly percentiles. So 0 0.25 for the 25th. And then this is where we need to be careful. For this, there's actually a few different ways beyond what we've taken a look at to calculate our quantiles. And so in this case here, the one that we want to utilize to get the same kind of answers as to how we've been doing it is type 6. We do that. Okay, we have something going on here. It is saying that there is an error. So let's try that again. What's going on here? Data frame. So often what happens is when we read in data, it's saying, okay, here's a big data frame. Often we could have many variables happening at the same time. And it's saying, okay, you want me to read the quantile, but of which column? Well, okay, you're like, well, that's silly. If we take a look at this, we only have the one column. But this doesn't always know that. So what we want to do is we want to put in some square brackets. Put a comma in the middle. If we think about it, this first one identifies our rows. The second one identifies our columns. So in this case, we'd want column one, or alternatively, you could call it by name, height, and run it that way. And we get our quantile, right? That way there, if we had several variables going on all at the same time, we could say, okay, sure, here's this data set, this spreadsheet. I only want to look at this one column from the spreadsheet. And that was the error we had there. So if I want to save this, right, I can save that as Q1. And again, we have it showing up there. 
and it says Q1 named sum of 157, right? It rounded our 157.25 to that. We can always call these again. I can just type in Q1, control enter, and it pops up my answer there in the, in the console. So to carry on, let's go Q2. We can cheat a little bit here. We can just select all of this and just bring it down. In this case here, I want my 50th percentile, so 0.5. And then Q3, I want my 75th percentile. If we run that, we see, okay, values popping up Q1, Q2, Q3 of 172 and 194. So we could check that, right? We could go do our location formula, go through, find out what it was, but we will find that, yeah, yeah, that's what it works out to. Thing is, it's rounding them over here in these values to see the actual value. You would have to go Q3, and you're like, oh, no, it's not 194. It's 193.75. So we would have that. Mean, well, to do that, let's start trying to type mean. There we go. It's popping up for us. And mean of what? Well, let's try the mean of x. Oh, no. Again, we get the same kind of ideas we had for our quantiles. To fix this again, square brackets, and we can call our column of interest. This time, I'm just going to say, hey, the first column, right, bracket, and then comma one. Again, keeping in mind these square brackets, let's put, let's put this over here. When we go our square brackets, it is inside of it looking at row, column. So row number, I'm receiving that blank saying I want all my rows, just column one. If I do that, boom, it pops up saying, hey, I have a mean, I have an average of 173.633. Carry on, variance. So we start typing variance. Let's see what pops up. Bar. Ah, uh, yep, that's our guy. So hit tab to pop that up. And we're gonna want the variance of X. I already know it's gonna ask for this again. And we're gonna hit control enter. And we have our variance. Here's the question, you're like, oh no. Is this my population variance? Is this my sample variance? What, which one did I just calculate? Well, Okay, for any of these, if you're ever lost, if you ever want more information, you can always go back and just kind of put your cursor over it. Like, so let's go take a look at mean, and you can hit F1. If you do that, you'll notice over here in the help, this little help thing pops up, and it tells us all about it, all the different arguments we can put into that, and what it's calculating. Variance, unfortunately, the variance one is not very helpful. It doesn't really go through it too much, so instead, well, sometimes with R, a quick Google search is really our, really our answer. And what we find with that is that the variance function in R is actually calculating our sample variance. And the reason why it defaults to this is that typically in statistics, we're utilizing samples. Very rarely do we get to play around with populations. So that's why the sample is the default. Say we wanted to figure out what our actual population variance was though. Well, okay, what would we do from there? If we want to figure out what the population variance is, we'd have to do a little trick. Keep in mind that our, so okay, S2 uh, sample variance, that was going to be equal to the sum of, I'm going to go x minus x bar all to the power of 2. And then we took that and we divided that by n minus 1. So, okay, we want it to be instead of divided by n minus 1, we want it to be divided by n. So that is if we times this guy by n minus 1, it would cancel out that denominator. And then if we divided by n, we'd get our n back. So, okay, you're like, what? Just, just trust me on that guy. So if we did variance of x1, and then we went times n minus 1 divided by n. But, okay, r isn't going to know what n is, isn't going to know what n is. So what we would have to look at is we'd have to find out how large our data set is. So again, how do we do that? Well, the way that we can find this is we can just pull out the dimension of our data frame, of our little data set there. So dim x. 
and we find that it is 30 by 1. So keep in mind, like we said, rows, column. We have 30 rows, one column. That is, we have 30 observations. So we could go 30 minus 1 all over 30. And if we ran that guy, we would get 1120. That would be what our population variance would be. So if we had to, this is how we could get our population variance. And I'll just put it like that. And again, just n, n, n. So essentially, we'd be just timesing our code by this n minus 1 divided by n. And that would give us our result there. Oh, we never saved our mean. We never saved our variance. Let's do that now. I'm going to call this guy here x bar. Right, we see that popping up. No, nope. right down there. And very similarly, I'm going to save my variance as s2 for s squared. And we see, uh, where is that guy popping up? Oh, right there, right above x bar. We have my variance popping up. Okay, what about standard deviation? How am I going to get my standard deviation? I don't actually have a built-in function for this. So to get my standard deviation, which I'm just going to call s, I'm just going to have to take s2 and take the square root of it. So to take the square root, we could use the square root command, sqrt of s2. And we get, we look up in here, s of 34. So we have that guy there. Skewness, there's no built-in skewness as well. So I'm going to name this sk for skewness. And keep in mind, our formula is going to be 3 times my mean minus my median, then the whole thing divided by the standard deviation. So this is really nice where we've given things names, is I can say, okay, my mean is x bar minus my median. What was my median? Q2 is what I saved that as. And then I'm going to divide everything by s. If I work that out, I get a skew of, right, pops up right up here, skew of 0 0.0999. So pretty close to, pretty close to zero, right? We have a fairly symmetric distribution overall. So that does us for all of our descriptive statistics. Fairly straightforward to get them. Let's jump back into our data visualization. So again, rule of 2 to the k, what was that? We wanted some value such that n was just less than or equal to 2 to the power of k. So we could play around with this. We could go 2 to the power of 3. What is that? 8. Okay, not what we want. 2 to the power of 4. 16. Not what we want. 2 to the power of 5. 32. There we go. So let's just set k equal to 5. Right, and again, that way there I can refer back to it, and it's set right there, k as 5. I know how many bins I'm ideally looking for. Bin width then, well, okay, this guy here, bin width is going to be, I don't want to name it because sometimes I want to change this. So let's just calculate my maximum, um, maximum, oh, little purple guy there saying, is that the one you want, the one you've already named? Yeah, I want that guy. Minus my minimum, uh, minimum, okay, maximum minus minimum divided by k. What does that give me? It says it suggests a bin width of 24. Now 24 would be okay to count for, by, but you know what's even easier than that? I'm going to use a bin width of 25. So, okay, bin width of 25, that will be nice and easy, good one to count. Now for our actual histogram itself. So okay, for our histogram, we're gonna use that ggplot package again, and we're gonna call our data set x. So ggplot of x. We're then gonna include in that our geome histogram, hit tab to bring that in. And for our aesthetics, we want our x variable to be Heights. Oh, what did I name it? Did I name it heights or did I name it height? I don't remember. Well, we can pull this up a few ways. We could go and we could type names of x. Height is what comes up. So there we go. 
take a look at that. And oh, right, by default, it just picks bins of 30. We don't like that. So what we want to do is we want to change this to be bin width of 25 and bins of 5. Let's take a look at how this looks here. Okay, bit better, bit better, but not great. Let's just refresh ourselves so that we can kind of get an idea as to how we want to cut things. What was my minimum value? Minimum was 120. So let's go and do that. Let's go and put in a boundary of 120. Okay, so now I'm getting it cut. It looks just like a big blob. Let's go add in here another comma and go color. Keep in mind, color just does our lines around it. I like doing color of black. All right, you can do something else. You could do color of blue here, and you get little blue lines. But let's stay with black. We could also, right, if we really want to be creative, we could change the fill, and we could do something like a fill of red. And right there we go. We have our histogram in that sense there. What I like to do, just to kind of give the little finishing touches of this, so I did plus to say I'm adding more stuff to my plot here, and I want to change my X scale. So scale, underline, X, continuous, and what I want is I want breaks. And I want my breaks to be, I can just list them as to how I would do my frequency table. C, to say, okay, I'm creating a column of numbers. My first number was 120, and then I'm counting up by bin width of 25. So 120, 145. 170, uh, 170 and 25 is going to be, what's that going to be, 195? Is that right? 195. Let me think about that for a second. Yep, 195. Then we're looking again after 195. We're jumping up to 220 and then 245. And how high do I have to go? That's, uh, we can call maximum or we can take a look up here. Oh, my maximum value is 240. Okay, so 245, I'm good. I'm good. Let's hit Control Enter. And we see that our histogram has binned itself with our breaks right at each value of the histogram. Last thing to do, let's give this guy a title. So again, I just started writing GG title and then hit tab. Hit tab to say, okay, what are my options? And I could go sample of heights in centimeters. Now watch this, if I hit enter, it's gonna give me an error. Oh no, something funny has happened. Well, it's because our title, this is just saying we want this as text. So I want to put brackets, not brackets, sorry, quotations around that. And if I try again, control enter, I have my update and I have my histogram. Last thing that we can do is we can save this, GG save, and to save it, we want to give it our file name, and we could save it as height histogram.png. Hit control enter on that guy there, and it will save it into our working directory. So that does us for how we can work out our descriptive statistics in R. Keep in mind, R is also essentially just a big calculator. We can also work through different things and get it that way. So for example, say at some point we just want to know, hey, what was all my values of x minus x bar? Oh, object x bar not found, what did I actually name it? See, we're case sensitive, capital x bar is how I named that. If we do that, it just went through, instead of us doing for each individual observation, this observation minus x bar, it did for all of them, this guy here. So similarly, we could go, okay, let's put brackets over that, and let's put that to the power of two. And we get our squared deviations from me. Let's put parentheses over all of this, and let's say I want the sum of this. I do that, and it gives me my sum of squared deviations from me. Okay, let's say we're going for our variance, so let's divide by my sample size. So that was going to be n minus 1. What did we find out our length to be? 30. So divided by 30 minus 1, and I get a variance of 1158.999. Let's see, is that the same as what we used? 
1158999 is what S2 gives us. That was our variance. So we can also use this just as a calculator and work through things this way. Hope that helps a bit. I think we touched on everything in there. If you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out either in the frequently asked questions or by email. Thanks.